This video will demystify the work done by instructional designers and will offer a glimpse into the e-learning development process. Here are the six steps we will take in order to materialize training packages for both academic and professional environments. Number one, need analysis. Before we start developing any kind of training solution, it's important to take a step back and identify what needs your e-learning course will be attempting to fulfill. What problems do we intend to solve? And who is our target audience? This is where a needs analysis comes into play. To improve and expand the understanding of your digital learning offerings, it is essential to assess and evaluate a performance issue to determine the root cause of the problem and propose a solution. In the process of designing an e-learning course, if you don't know why a performance issue exists, you may build a training solution for a non-training problem that will result in a total waste of your time and effort. A proper needs analysis will help you tailor your learning content to be able to tackle your learner's existing performance needs. Number two, action map. E-learning practitioners are always looking for powerful ways to keep the course development process as efficient and well-organized as possible. To set up a creative workflow and streamline the design of your e-learning course, we may need to think about a technique known as action mapping. The process of action mapping walks you through identifying learning outcomes and developing a list of actions needed to achieve those outcomes. While content is key in all e-learning disciplines, those that have been materialized using action mapping usually manage to prevent cognitive overload and enhance knowledge retention. The idea is to concentrate on mapping the outcomes in the center and listing high-priority actions that you want your learners to practice around relevant outcomes. Don't forget that outcomes have to be measurable and attainable while actions are observable. For visualization and presentation purposes, we would suggest using mind mapping tools like MindMaster or Figma. It's easy to perform collaborative actions. It contains creative vector graphics and prototyping features. Number three, storyboard. After having our outcomes and actions mapped, we can now move to laying out the story of the training course. This is where the content and notes are going to be outlined as a text-based blueprint of the entire e-learning project. If you are not artistically inclined, it can be based on just texts. It doesn't really need to include any visual representations. Let us highlight the fact that our e-learning course usually provides the learner with a scenario-based and story-driven learning experience. This means that you will need to design the introduction and conclusion of your story by answering the following questions. How to position the learner in relation to the content? How to help the learner attain their learning outcomes? The main part, however, is your content. It typically includes all visible texts to appear in the order you would like it to be displayed. Depending on the structure of your course, you may attribute descriptions to graphic mockups or the animations you will want to use. You may also need to describe the path the user will take after clicking certain elements on the course's screen. Lastly, it is very important to always check if your storyboard content maps aligns with your learning outcomes. Number four, visual mockups. The next step, which is the fun part of the project, is to start designing visual layouts and interaction paths. This step will be used to propose solutions on how the program will look like and how the information will be presented. Visual layouts and inclusion of interactivity can be done using a combination of tools such as Adobe XD, Articulate Storyline, Photoshop, Figma, or even PowerPoint, if you're not very tech-oriented, let's say. However, you need to make sure that you are focusing on the following. Graphical, user interface, and interaction design. Look and feel, for example the graphic identity which has colors, images, design schemes, characters, and other visual symbols. Number five, prototype. 
Once the coarse mock-up is done, you can start developing the prototype, which is a smaller version of the final product. The prototype will need to demonstrate how the course performs. This means that we will be able to assess its interactivity and overall functionality as if we were the end users. At this stage, you will be able to benefit from as much feedback as you need and get approval from your team before moving on to the project's final development stage. Number six, final product. Congratulations, your prototype has been approved. So what's next, you might ask? Well, the last stage is to run quality assurance tests. It's important to make sure that everything is functional and ready to be handed out to the stakeholders. We hope you managed to understand how we can provide value for your projects. We will guide you through the whole process, whether you are a seasoned academic or a professional in need to create innovative training for your team. If you want to start creating exceptional, tailor-made content, just please get in touch. Thank you.